In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Reverend Father, religious, my brothers and sisters in Christ, when the Israelites entered the Holy Land, God commanded them to process around Jericho with the ark. When they did this, as we all know, the walls fell and they took the city. Many years later, however, after suffering a very discouraging defeat at the hands of the Philistines, they thought it wise to bring the ark out again, assuming it would give them a sure victory. But instead, 30,000 of them were slaughtered, and the ark was captured and fell into the hands of the Philistines. It was not out of devotion that the Israelites brought forth the ark that day. As Psalm 77 recounts, they had embraced the ways of the world, ways of the world around them, and they wanted to use the ark as a talisman, as a tool. And so, while God had chosen to dwell among men in the tabernacle, he found the Israelites unworthy for him to dwell among. And so he let their ark be taken away. Today, in our observance of the Feast of Corpus Christi and parishes everywhere, we will hold a triumphal procession, which will carry the true manna from heaven. We shall process proudly through the streets around the church with our great King, our great Lord, who has conquered the world. It's a triumphant procession, recognizing that against Christ the powers of the devil are nothing. And we are very much right to do this and right to rejoice. For what nation is there so great, or who has gods so close to them as the Lord our God is to us? St. Thomas Aquinas reminds us that there is nothing more precious than the Eucharist, nothing more marvelous, nothing more health-giving, where sins are purged away, strength renewed, and the soul fed upon the fatness of spiritual gifts. So health-giving, it even gives health to the dead, the souls in purgatory. It is sweeter and more comforting than anything else in this world. It is, in reality, a memorial of that exceedingly great love which Christ showed in the time of his sufferings. St. Thomas says, It is the greatest miracle which he ever wrought. So we are right to rejoice today. But we must beware the danger of complacency and worldliness, lest we become like the Israelites. Remember, they had the ark. They were still the chosen people, but they were not living their faith fully. They were not devout. They wanted to be friends with the world, even as they wished to defend themselves from the harshness of the Philistines. Why don't these guys like us? How much is this like the lukewarm Catholic, the one who wishes to dress, to act, for the most part, like everyone else does, who thinks that the traditional faith, traditional morality, traditional attire is too demanding? Listen to Father Gabriel of St. Mary Magdalene. He says, We cannot help shuddering at the terrible blindness of a man who prefers the things of earth and the vile pleasures of the senses, which vanish as quickly as mist before the sun, to Christ's gift, the bread of angels, and the pledge of eternal life. And yet, how easily can a shadow of this blindness cover the eyes and hearts, even of those whom Christ has invited to follow him, and whom he has called by the sweet name of friend? They do not refuse his invitation, but they often accept it coldly, almost through force of habit. Is it not true that we pay very little attention to preparing ourselves as worthily as we can for the Eucharistic banquet, while we allow ourselves to be absorbed in so many other things, our work, family, and friends? Too often, he concludes, 
there is little room left for Christ. Consider the words of Jeremiah. Thus saith the Lord, Cursed be the man that trusteth in man, and maketh flesh his arm, and whose heart departeth from the Lord. For he shall be like Teramach in the desert, and he shall not see when good shall come. But he shall dwell in dryness in the desert, in a salt land, and not inhabited. These are they who leave their bodies and their hearts far from our Lord in the Blessed Sacrament. A man must be devoted to something. He must love and spend his time on something. Those who hold to a minimal practice of their faith, but save their energetic love for the world, and looking and acting like worldlings, are like the Israelites, fooling only themselves, soon to be slaughtered. What is the solution? Jeremiah gives, a, Jeremiah gives us this as well. Blessed is he, the man that trusteth in the Lord, and the Lord shall be his confidence, and he shall be as a tree that is planted by the waters, that spreadeth out its roots towards moisture, and it shall not fear when the heat cometh. And the leaf thereof shall be green, and in the time of drought it shall not be solicitous, neither shall it cease at any time to bring forth fruit. The answer then is this. Be this tree, this tree that is planted close to the saving waters, and plant yourself close to the blessed sacrament. We must cultivate devotion to the Eucharist, not just today in our procession, nor on Sundays only. Well, we are busy. Indeed, we are. But consider the desert that we live in. We live in a hostile world, a world that has dried up almost entirely of the saving waters, that preaches at us constantly the false doctrines of liberalism, feminism, now the fulfillment of both of those, transgenderism. It is like we have become a cultural death valley. But this is the world that we live in. So we must decide then, how can you hope to survive in such a hostile and arid environment? You must nourish your soul all the more with the Holy Eucharist. You must make visits to the Blessed Sacrament during the week. Avail yourself of daily Mass, of adoration. I would suggest consider, consider rearranging your schedule, making new priorities. Again, you are a tree. What stream are you planted closest to? If it's not the Blessed Sacrament, it's something else. How much time, for instance, do you spend on the internet? Do you devote 30 minutes to Facebook or Instagram? Does this time not immerse you in the world, in worldly attire, in modest fashions, hostile ideologies, pointless arguments? Would your soul not be better nourished by 30 minutes of adoration in front of the Blessed Sacrament? Or, how much time and devotion do you put into sports? Contrary to what our culture may think, we must remember the truth that all sports, organized, unorganized, for adults or for children, are for recreation. They are oftentimes a healthy form of recreation, don't get me wrong, but they are still recreation. They are games. Games. Plain and simple, and nothing more. Once any of our recreational activities demands too much of our time and effort, of our heart, of our devotion, of our sacrifice, especially when we find ourselves choosing fun before prayer, we know that we have the wrong priorities. 
And what is more important for your children, playing some silly game or growing in devotion to our Lord in the Blessed Sacrament? If you only have time for one, which will it be? Are you giving them what they need to survive in this hostile environment? Show me what a man is willing to make sacrifices for, and I will show you what he loves the best. What would you say to a man, then, who had to walk a great distance, like through Death Valley, who had to walk a great distance in the hot sun, but refused to stop and drink water? Oh, that'll take too much time. I'm busy. I've got this long journey to walk through. Will that journey be easy? Will he live to see the end of it? Will his time be productive? So it is with us. If you find yourself too busy to go to Mass, too busy to make visits to the Blessed Sacrament, to adoration, even if it's just a few minutes a day or a few times throughout the week, that is, of course, when you're able-bodied and have transportation and so on, perhaps it is time to re-examine those priorities, to work within your families, to take turns with your spouse going to Mass or visiting the Blessed Sacrament. Again, as we know, those with children in organized sports show themselves quite capable of this skill. They rearrange a lot, rearrange a lot buy a lot, do a lot throughout the week which is not wrong in itself. But like all things, we have to put the skills that we have at God's disposal first and foremost. The king sent servants, saying, Tell them that were invited, Behold, I have prepared my dinner. My calves and fatlings are killed, and all things are ready. Come ye to the marriage. But they neglected and went their own ways, one to his farm, and another to his merchandise. Then he saith to his servants, The marriage is indeed ready, but they that were invited were not worthy. But those that make more time for being physically present with our Lord shall be like that tree, which is planted near the waters, which produces much fruit, and is unaffected by the heat and aridity of this world, this world which is passing and fading away, never to return. Time spent on Facebook, on sports, may be entertaining for the moment, but that's it. You're not going to care after you die. Not going to matter. It's like reading a magazine while you wait in the bus stop, you know? You're leaving that behind. But time spent at Mass, Time spent in prayer before the Blessed Sacrament is a preparation for an eternity of happiness with our Lord Jesus Christ, which happy eternity I wish for all of you. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen.